Here's a problem. Calculate the temperature at which 2% of diatomic hydrogen disassociates into monoatomic hydrogen at a pressure of 10 atm. So the reaction equation of interest is uh, H2 disassociating into two H's. Is that equation found in our textbook? Yeah, in that table? Yeah, it is. And so the question is, is uh, I'm going to try and write it this way in a table form. I'm going to talk about uh, H2 and H. I'll talk about the amount as well as the mole fraction. But I didn't leave enough room. Let me scoot this down. I need a little more room on my header, on my table. But I'm going to talk about at, at the start. Let's say it starts at low temperature, low temperature conceptually. And then we'll talk about it at the end. We'll talk about the amount at the end and the mole fraction at the end. Okay. So here's the big dividing line between start and end. So we, we don't, we're going to find the temperature, the final temperature, at which 2% of the diatomic hydrogen has disassociated. True? Okay, so let's start off the process and say uh, it starts conceptually at low temperature. Let's start with one kilomole of hydrogen, diatomic hydrogen, and no kilomoles of monoatomic hydrogen. Okay? So in sum, what is the total number? One. What is the mole fraction? 100% and 0%. Okay. Now, we're going to boost the temperature such that you get a 2% uh, disassociation of diatomic hydrogen. So if I started with one kilomole of hydrogen, how many kilomoles of hydrogen, diatomic hydrogen, do I have left if 2% has disassociated? 0.98. That's how, what is that again? That's how many kilomoles. Okay. Let's look back at our reaction equation. H2 disassociates to produce two monoatomic hydrogens. So, how much of the diatomic hydrogen disassociated in terms of kilomoles? 0.02 disassociated. True? Here's the hard part. How many monoatomic hydrogens were produced? And if I had a clicker question base, I would ask that, and I'd ask you to all compute it. Because the answer could be, oh, at the end of this, I could have either the number of moles of hydrogen being uh, 0 0.02, 0 0.04, or something else. But the two real contenders are 0 0.02 kilomoles or 0 0.04 kilomoles. Which one is it? 0 0.04. And what was key to understanding why it's not 0.02? Because of the coefficient 2 in that dissociation reaction equation. So uh, this is the hardest part right there, 0.04. Do you understand why it's 0.04? If it would have been 3% disassociation, how would those numbers change? It would be 0.97 for the amount of... H2, and it would be 0 0.06 for the amount of H in the final equilibrium. This is why it's so important. If I sum this up, what do I get? Do I get 1? I get 1.02. What? Are we producing hydrogen here? Is mass conserved? Mass is conserved, but what you've taken is a larger H molecule, H2, and split it so you have more gas, so to speak, more molecules. There's been a 2% increase in the amount of gas molecules. So now if you want to calculate the y, then it would be 0.98 divided by 1.02, would it not? It's not going to be 
Is it going to be slightly above 98% or below 98%? Slightly below 98%. And uh, the 0 0.04 divided by 1.02. I think that table really helps. If you got that table down, <laughs> then you really have solved this problem. Let's go back and say, here's my dissociation equation. I know that that equation, just like many other equations in the textbook, has a equilibrium constant K. And in the, I can apply the general form for the equilibrium constant K, that equation, the reaction equation, to this problem, and I'll find that, oh, I'll have the final amount of hydrogen squared divided by the final amount of diatomic hydrogen raised to the one power. True or false? Does that look good? Times my pressure, which is 10 atm, divided by my reference pressure of 1 atm, divided by the total number of moles in equilibrium, n, all raised to the power 2 minus 1. Did I apply that equation correctly? Okay. So what I do is I say I know everything on the right-hand side. Let's just plug it all into the right-hand side and get the K. Once I have the K, I'll go to the table and find the right temperature. Okay, so I plug in 0 0.98. Oops, messed up. 0 0.04 quantity squared divided by 0 0.98. 10 divided by 1.02 raised to the power 1. Okay, can somebody uh, get on the calculator, run that for me, and then tell me what number you get? 0 0.016, another digit or two? Uh, zero, zero, very good. So now that you know what K is, and you know K is a function of temperature, what you have to do is go to the table. Now, go, on the table, they put log base 10 of K. So go ahead and calculate the log base 10 of 0 0.016. And what number do you get? Yep, negative 1.796. Who can verify that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Excellent. Now you go to the table. And you say, for this reaction only, I'm looking for at the temperature, but I know that it's negative one point, what was it, somewhere in here, right? Negative one point, I already forgot it, 796. All right. Now, last step, everybody that's running with me on the calculator, do that interpolation. Let me just verify. Negative 1.796, negative 1.796 falls between these two values. No, okay. So that would be in temperature, uh, but we want to put it to three significant digits. There you go. 29.70.